and we welcome you to Brooks Stadium here in Conway, South Carolina. Sunbelt football tonight here on ESPN. Our matchup, it's the Shauna Clears of Coastal Carolina at 5-5. Five and five. At home, taking on the Eagles of Georgia Southern up the road from Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern comes in tonight at 7-3. and three. Alongside the coach, Nate Ross, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Nate's uh, two similar storylines. Uh, both these squads have lost two straight trying to get back into the win column, but a huge sense of urgency for Coastal Carolina tonight. While Georgia Southern already has seven wins, Coastal still with just five, looking for one more to get bowl eligible. Yeah, every FBS team wants to get that sixth win. As you said, Georgia Southern already has theirs, plus one. The Coastal Carolina Shana Clears don't want to wait for that last game to try to get that sixth one. They want to get it here tonight. It's also senior day, last game for the seniors on this teal turf, so they want to take care of business today. All right, let's look at some players to watch here tonight for this matchup. We'll start with Georgia Southern. They are led by, really, Nate, one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the conference, Shy Works. Yeah, dual threat quarterback extraordinary. He leads his team in passing, of course, but he also leads his team in rushing. And look at all the touchdowns as well in a very high quarterback rating. This op option offense, in only his second year, he is mastering it, and they are very good because of him and the row line. Yeah, and this pistol gun option offense you were talking about, very difficult to stop sometimes, and this is going to take a true team effort by Coastal to slow these guys down. Well, it's going to take the guys up front to try to stop the dive, but then the second and third levels are very, very important. And in those two levels, Teddy Gallagher's had a great couple last two or three games. He's got to be in the second level as a linebacker. And then the last level of defense is Fitz Watley as a safety. Either of these guys make a mistake, and their counterpart six points going aboard. This offense tries to fool you. They can't get fooled if they're going to get a W here. Again, for Coastal Carolina, five wins on the season, looking for number six to get to bowl eligibility. Their final home game of the season comes your way here from Conway, South Carolina. Kickoff right after this on ESPN. Back at Conway. Here at Brooks Stadium, there you see the Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears taking the field with 40 of their closest friends on their Harleys, it revving sounds, their engines as the Shauna Clears make their way on the field. Looks good, sounded better. What a beautiful night here for Sunbelt Football on ESPN. Alongside Nate Ross, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Temperature right near 60 degrees here at sunset. Again, we're in Conway, South Carolina, just about a oh, 20 to 30 minute drive from the beaches of Myrtle Beach. And again, an awesome scene here. All the Harleys making their way out of the field about 20 minutes ago and giving a salute to the players here on Senior Day from the beautiful campus of Coastal Carolina University. And we are just moments away from the kickoff again for Georgia Southern, seven and three. After a seven and one start and eight, they've now lost two straight like, they were, like we were just talking about. However, the last two weeks, similar for Coastal Carolina, for Georgia Southern, it's been real difficult. They were at UL Monroe and uh, lost 44 to 25 and then lost last week against Troy, 35 to 21. And you know, some of the Georgia Southern people we've talked to said uh, Troy is, is really one of the best teams in the conference and really kind of flexing their muscles here over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and the interesting thing was when we got a chance to um, talk with Coach Lunsford during the week, he said he was really excited how they started really well last week. They just couldn't seal the deal to finish the game. And again for Coastal Carolina, they've also lost two straight. And trying to get back on track here at home, it's been difficult to hear at home for Joe Mowgli and his staff. There you see Joe in his sixth season as the head coach here for the Shawnee Clears. One to three at home so far this season. As you see the guys here on Military Appreciation Day wearing the digital camo hats. I love that look. Yeah, you'll see that. You'll see the black helmets. And uh, they look like they're ready to rock and roll, but that doesn't mean anything. You've got to go out and perform on the field. I mean, that's always nice. It's better than standing there not doing anything. But you got to get ready to play, and they're playing a really good team with a really difficult offense to try to stop. So again, for Coastal Carolina, Joe Mowgli in his sixth season, 25th season overall as a football coach, two-time Big South Co Conference uh, Coach of the Year, four-time conference champions while they're in the Big South, and of course now have made the move here to Division One with the Sun Belt. And on the flip side for Georgia Southern, we got a chance to talk to him earlier this week, Chad Lunsford, first season as uh, as a full-time yep. head coach here at Georgia Southern, took over 
uh, as the interim and then as the head coach late last season for Georgia Southern. He's really established that that pride and uh, and that tradition again of Georgia Southern football. Yeah, he did not have a good interim career, I guess, the end of last season. But, boy, they turned around this year with seven wins already. So, again, Chad Lunsford, first season as the uh, – Full-time head coach for Georgia Southern. And the Eagles 7-3, and 4-2 and two in Sunbelt play. And it was Coastal Carolina who actually Georgia Southern won at the toss and deferred. So Georgia Southern will kick off. So we'll see Coastal Carolina on offense here it's tonight. It's rare you see a team win and take the ball. They just rarely do that because they want that second half momentum, I guess. We'll see how it works out. Georgia Southern, Tyler Bass will get us going. Came back deep to receive for Coastal Carolina. Will be Jai Williams and also Kion Tyler as we are set for action again here from Brooks Stadium. Thanks for tuning in tonight here on ESPN as we are officially underway. And Tyler's going to watch this one go into the end zone. So right away, Coastal will get the ball out at the 25-yard line. And just as we have been really kind of guessing here over the last three or four weeks now for Coastal Carolina, it's always been a question mark of who will be the starting quarterback. Will it be Kilton Anderson, the senior from Naples, Florida? Or will it be the youngster, Freddie Payton, the freshman from Swanee, Georgia? Just outside of the Atlanta area, and we've got our answer. It is Fred Payton making his fourth career start here for Coastal. Just the third ever true freshman starter in school history. And first play is a handoff. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. May, maybe a gain of one here for Coastal. Well, for Georgia Southern, this defense, Nate, has been terrific as far as forcing turnovers. Plus 21 yeah, in the turnover market. That's kind of amazing that they've done that, but they've done it very well. 14 interceptions and 13 forced fumbles this season for the defense of the Eagles. Peyton fires, completes over on the far sideline, and that will be a quick first down here for the shot of clears. Right up the middle the first time, and then just kick it out to the little out pattern, get the safe route, get a little confidence for your quarterback, and most importantly, get a first down. A lot of wide receiver weapons for Fred Payton, but he goes to Shadell Bell, the tight end, with just his sixth reception of the season. Payton on the keeper, up the middle, and falls forward near the 50-yard line. Back-to-back -back first downs now for the Chanticleers. Now we talked in the open about the Chanticleer defense, second and third level. Mr. Payton gets to the third level right here before anybody actually touches him. Slips that tackle on another first down. Good start for the freshman QB and his team. Again for Payton. 41 of 61 this season. Just under 600 yards passing, five touchdowns, two interceptions. He's also run for over 130 yards. So has not played a whole lot this season. Played a lot here late. And obviously has established himself as a dual threat quarterback. Handoff on first down. That'll pick up about three or four yards. You can see when the guys in the white shirts, Georgia Southern, make a tackle, they, they, they have a bunch of people to get there. That's what they do defensively. Everybody runs to the football and they gang tackle, which is a great way to be, especially with it. This is sort of an option offense, but not anywhere near the option offense we're going to see when the Eagles of Georgia Southern get the ball. Split backfield for Costa with Alex James and C.J. Marable. They fake it to James. Peyton now passes to Marable over here on the near side. He's tripped up and falls forward for a gain of about a yard as the tackle's made by Chris Harris, Jr., the middle linebacker for Georgia Southern. The thing I liked about that, Jeff, was he had a, he had a man deep. He looked. He didn't think he was open. So he made a quick decision to get to Marable. Granted, Chris Harris, the linebacker, made a nice tackle, but it was a quick decision. You see from Marable, he's been a receiving threat as well. Three touchdowns. Ten receptions this season. A big third down again here for Coastal.
Aiden looking downfield. Hits a man across the middle, and that will be another first down for Coastal Carolina. As the catch is made by Kion Tyler, the junior walk-on out of Central South Carolina. Great pass. The freshman, Mr. Payton, is making some great reads. He gets a linebacker trying to cover Tyler across the middle. Tyler's just quicker on the crossing route. Big time play, third down conversion, another first down. Tyler is such an explosive runner. Well over 300 yards receiving on the season. First and 10 from the 30. Maribel trying to get around the corner and gets down to the 26 yard line. So pick up a three yards again on first down. John Freeman, a strong safety with a nice fill number 24 to stop that play from going north and south. Just keep him going east and west. But we've talked to Coach Chadwell during the season. He wants to get certain matchups. When you get a matchup of a linebacker on any of your quick backs, you went to Tyler two plays ago. That's what you want. You do that by formation. And you do that by situation. James and Maribel again split in the backfield. And now Maribel in motion on second down. Payton throws complete. Nice catch. Inside the 20 for Maribel, and that will be enough for the first down again. For 20, Kendall Vindor turns it inside, but he just turns on the Jets right here and gets between the two linebackers. And eventually, the Paris guy we've already talked about makes the tackle, but another first down. Well, the great thing that we're seeing out of Coastal's offense here early that you and I have talked about the last couple of weeks is some misdirection. I mean, just the simple fake to James just to try and get the linebackers moving a little bit and then going back to the left. Very varied formations and motions. They fake the handoff across the middle into the end zone, and it is incomplete. A little bit of contact, but no flag. Vildor with the coverage again. Kindle Vildor, the junior. Watch his left arm. Does he get it around the receiver? Eh, a little bit, but not enough to throw the yellow hand. Well, the secondary has been very good. There you see Vildor leads the team in interceptions this season with four. He has seven career INTs. Second down and ten. Here for the freshman, Fred Payton. And again, Coastal spreads it out to the pass a little bit too high. Looking again for his receiver over here on the near sideline. Second time in a row he's targeted Javon Hiley, the freshman from Venice, Florida. Yeah, maybe a little quick. I mean, he threw a little quicker than he wanted to, but just out of Hiley's reach, 6-2. He went up the ladder, but just couldn't go high enough to get it. It's a game of third down. And, and now a big opportunity for the Georgia Southern defense to try and get off the field here on third down and 10. Freshman can run too, and he's pretty good at it. Payton pitches it to Marable around the outside down to the 10 yard line. It looks like he's going to be just shy. So fourth and short coming up for the Shawna Clears. A lot of teal, teal jerseys out in front of him, and he, he could see the yard marker. He was, he was running right at it. You could see the official standing on the far sideline. Two yards to go, and Coach Moglia is not hesitating a bit, keeping the offense out there. I love it. You can't tell your kids to go try to get a sixth win and be bowl eligible and then kick it early. I like this call. Motion here for Coastal. Peyton makes sure everyone's set. Now checks the play with five seconds on the play clock, down to three, Which gonna stop down it. to one, spins, hands it off, a little bit of room up the middle, and just enough for the first down. It's funny, I'm watching Coach Mugley on the sidelines, and he kind of jogged, didn't sprint, and he got it off just in time. Nice little jump, uh, excuse me, hop step two ways. He got the first down. Coach Mogan was about to call the timeout, and Fred Payton beat him to it by snapping the football. Alex James, the sophomore from just up the road in Florence, South Carolina. Like you said, that little hop step, able to just get free for the first down. And now first down and goal from the six-yard line. Payton with a quick snap, spins, hands it off again up the middle. The pile pushing near the line and down at about the yard and a half. Marker here for Coastal Carolina. So second down and goal coming up. Second time they overloaded that left side to have an extra man to try to have the advantage, but the uh, big front three of 
Logan Hunt, Ty Phillips, and Raymond Johnson. Gave him a couple yards, didn't give him enough to get in the end zone, but going second down. See if they can get deception to get in the end zone here, because that's what they've done so far, you're right, first series. Alex James, alone running back. Double tight ends on second. And goal, handoff again, up the middle. And down at the one yard line. So that big front four and a couple of linebackers for Georgia Southern coming up with another big stop. Now third and goal. See the lines been there. At the, they gave him forward progress to the one and a half. That knocked backwards a lot further than that. But I'm not sure. Practice. The yard and a half is supposed to be able to get a yard and a half. Low man wins right here. Whoever gets leverage. I was just going to say, I'm not sure who they're going to get credit for the tackle, but it was Ian Bush, the red shirt, red shirt uh, senior nose guard who was. Low man that time. You can see him right there with the long blue sleeves. Fakes the handoff to James. Little pass into the flat and into the end zone. Touchdown, Coastal Carolina. Finds his tight end, Isaiah Likely, for his second touchdown of the year. There's your deception. They went inside over the left side for about three straight plays. They'll fake it. Likely runs into another player, excuse me, the defender runs into another player, likely just walks in the end zone. Shots on the board first. And again, some misdirection. They get Likely wide open. Actually, that's his third touchdown of the season for the backup tight end for Coastal Carolina. Now Massimo Biscardi in for the extra point, and he pushed it right. It has been a little bit of an adventure in extra points this season for Coastal but there is a flag on the play. Offsides on Georgia Southern, so Coastal will get another opportunity as we hear from Kyle Olson, our referee for the first time today. Remember what they did last week when this happened? Went, Went for, for two. two. Doesn't look like they're gonna do it this week, and didn't make it last week, I might add. Coach Mowgli is a percentage guy. Even though his kicker missed, getting a second chance. Penalties are a killer in football. If this point goes, that was a big one. Scardi with another opportunity, and this one is good. What a drive for Coastal Carolina. 15 plays, 75 yards. Just on away here from Conway. Shauna Clear is on top, 7-0. Well, what a start for Coastal Carolina. 15 plays and 75 yards. Perfect seven balance. minutes Eight and 30 seconds taken off the clock as well. He rushes seven passes. I mean, you can't have a better drive than that. It's balanced. It went down the field. You made crucial third downs. And you got a break because the defense jumped on the PAT, which you missed. But you got another opportunity, and shots put seven on the board. So a 7 nothing lead for Coastal Carolina if you're just tuning in. Shauna clears five and five on the season. So one win away with two games to play to try and get bowl eligible for their first season of bowl eligibility. I mean, it's still a very young program here for Division One. Absolutely, and it, what a turnaround from last year if they can get it. Couldn't have a better start. Now the defense is rested. Got to come on and play against a tough offense. Georgia Southern now will get a chance to respond. We'll see their offense for the first time. Wesley Kennedy on the run. Squirts free, gets across the 40-yard line up to the 42. What a return by Wesley Kennedy. A good field position here for the Eagles. We've, we've had the fortune of doing a couple games here. Sean Clare's special teams have not secured tackles on kickoffs a lot. And because of that, Georgia Southern's getting the ball near midfield, just over to 40. All right, our first time to see Shy Wirtz here tonight, the redshirt sophomore starting quarterback. There you see number four for Georgia Southern out of Clinton, South Carolina, Newberry High School. A multitude of running backs, but they all run the same system. On the jet sweep, here's Kennedy around the right side and tackled at the 45. Pickup of about three or four yards. So, you know, again, this is not a true triple option offense they will run a triple option from time to time but when we were talking with coach Lunsford during the week he said I, I said what do you call it he said we call it a pistol gun option yep and there's the guy we talked about in the open with the tackle too Teddy Gallagher chased it down from behind 34 the sophomore out of California 
Keep your eye on number 21, Wesley Fields. Second on the team in rushing. And he pounds his way across the 50 and about a half a yard shy of the first down. That's what you got to stop to stop this, uh, this offense. The belly, the A-gap, whatever you want to call it, is giving it to somebody right up the middle. And that man number four reads the tackle and goes from there. But that's the play you got to stop because if it gets four or five yards every time, this offense is tough to slow down. Wirtz up the middle, and I'm not sure he made it. And right there to make the stop was Teddy Gallagher. They're about a yard and a half short. Gallagher once again, two to three plays. Question is, you gamble if you coach Lunsford. Watch this. It's the second time Gallagher's come from behind the play to make the play. And Georgia Southern's going for it. What a big play early in the first quarter. Just a half a yard shy is Georgia Southern. So fourth down. Handoff to the big man. First man through Logan Wright, six foot, about 225, 230. He is a redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. And when you need a couple of yards, he's your guy. He is a load. You can see it's just hat on hat up front. He'll find the opening. The redshirt freshman gets the first down and then some. All state player back in high school. Actually, one of the top 200 running backs in the nation this senior year. He picked a good school to go to because they run it a lot. And here is the more traditional triple option look. Diamond formation. Wirtz with a handoff around the left side to Monteo Garrett. His first carry and gets one yard on the play. Boy, it's so tough to stop. And when you get a quarterback like Shy Wirtz, I mean, it's really almost like slide of hand type of stuff. It's, it's, it's an tough. extra running back. Yep. Teddy Gallagher might have 150 tackles when it's over. He's in on that <laughs> one as well. You just can't get fooled and anticipate. Eye discipline is what Coach Marvin Sanders, the D coordinator, told us they have to keep the entire game. Right in again. And they will give it to him again, just pushing his way up the middle inside the 40. And it's going to bring up about third down and five, it looks like, for Georgia Southern. And you see Shy Works talking to our official, our referee, Kyle Olson, like, come on, man. He got nailed as he handed the ball off. It wasn't late, hence there wasn't a penalty, but he got popped pretty good. Well, keep in mind the rules are also a little bit different when you're running right. versus when you're in the act of passing True. as well. So Third down and five coming up Teddy for Shy Wirtz. doing his jumping jacks right in the middle of your picture, ready to roll. Right and Fields, Kennedy in motion. They'll give it to Fields. He finds room around the left side. Just tripped up as he dives inside the 20 down to the 19. First down for Georgia Southern. Everybody goes right except the ball goes left in a shoestring tackle right there. It might have been Laquavius Paul 25. It was 20-something. I couldn't see the other number. Nonetheless, he stopped the touchdown. Seven plays, 39 yards now for Georgia Southern. First and 10 from the 19. Ellis Richardson in at that H-back position. And a fumble picked up by Kennedy on the bounce. And nowhere to go. He's tackled on the far sideline for a loss. And with the tackle is James Heft. Football goes off shy works, and it's just like a perfect pitch. Kennedy in the right place at the right time, or that's Sean Clear football. See, I talked about sleight of hand. It's all part it of the play. Just how they yeah. drew it up. Yeah, bounce it off my shoulder <laughs> and let me let somebody else get a pitch. Don't think that was the way it was designed, but you never know. A loss of three, so second down and 13. Garrett and Fields in a running back. Works this time is going to take it, and he's tripped up. Dives down to about the 17-yard line, and third down and long now for the Eagles. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm guessing the Wildcat offense kind of came out of the old wishbone or whatever because it's another running back. This young man just happens to be able to throw the ball as well. But uh, 
multiple threats to try to stop this offense. Wirtz on the season, eight rushing touchdowns, or make it 11 rushing touchdowns and eight passing touchdowns. And third down and eight now for Georgia Southern. Eagles will spread it out for the first time. And they give it to Fields. A flag on the play as he will get inside the 10. Enough for the first down, but we'll see what the flag is. Okay, Kyle Olson, our referee today, so we'll hear from him for the second Southern time. Southern is walking backwards. I say where that was thrown, you would think, maybe holding, but we'll see. If we were in England, they'd say they're sorting it out. Big one. For safety reasons, you cannot go low anywhere. And they did from the outside. You can within tackle to tackle, but they did at another area, and that's all about safety. That's a big penalty. 15 yards back the other way. It's going to take the ball all the way out to the 29-yard line. They don't throw it much, but you would think this is a situation where Shy Wurst is going to rely on his arm to get this first down. Third down and 20 as they quickly come to the line. Man coverage with a safety over the top for the shots. They'll spread it out again. Again, third down and 20. Wirtz dumps it off to Richardson, quickly hit inside the 30-yard line. Ellis Richardson, one of those H-backs with the catch, but then hit Everybody out, went to a screen right up the middle, and there's a good job by Jonathan Clayton. Bear hug at running back, make it a fourth down play. That's tough because the motion was going everywhere but the middle. Long field goal attempt. Well, and Georgia Southern's going to try for the field goal. Tyler Bass has a really good leg. This one from 44 yards. It's good. Halfway up the net. That was good from a long way out. Well, Bass. Five field goals this season between 40 and 49. It makes this one look easy. Plenty of leg. Georgia Southern's on the board. Coastal with a 7-3 lead. Back at Brooks Stadium here in Conway, South Carolina. Sunset here uh, on a beautiful night for Sunbelt football here on ESPN. 34 seconds left here in the first quarter. That scoring drive, by the way, for Georgia Southern ends up being just 31 yards because of the 15-yard penalty. So 12 plays, 31 yards capped off on the 44-yard field goal by Tyler Bass. And I told you about Tyler Bass's leg. That's now the sixth field goal he's made this season between 40 and 49 yards, so he can really kick. And that thing was way up the net. That could have gone for another 15, 18 yards <laughs> easy. <laughs> and here is Bass to boot it away, and he will kick this one out of the end zone. I kind of like, wasn't it your idea earlier yeah. this season? Give goes points to, when they put it through? Goes to the upright, you get a point. That was awfully close. Just misses low into the left. Seven to three, Coastal Carolina with the lead. Another break and back with more. Well, again, two long scoring drives for each team for Coastal Carolina. A seven to three lead as they're able to cap off theirs with a touchdown. And for Georgia Southern, they were marching down the field, but then got the chop block penalty, which sent them back 15 yards. But again, heck of a boo by Tyler Bass from 44 yards to make it seven to three. Back in offense for the second time is Coastal. They find some room around the outside. And Another first down for the shot of clears. Everybody wants a flag on that sideline. I don't argue with him. He's way out of bounds. They tried to strip the ball loose. It was Alex James, the ball carrier again. Once you step on that white strip, you're supposed to let go. He didn't. Alex James doesn't care. He got a big game the first down. Oh, well, Marcus Outlow, we've seen him kind of battling through some injuries over the last couple of weeks for Coastal. So we expected Alex James and C.J. Marable to get quite a bit of the load. And we've seen a lot of Alex here early on. Yeah, and C.J. Marable's got those jets he can turn on another gear. Saw that early in the season. Haven't seen it since. And again, the give is to James. And he'll pick up a yard, maybe two. As he's tackled and thrown down from behind. Ty Phillips, 6'3", 290, and quick feet. It's a great asset of a defensive 
nose tackle, and he's the one who grabbed him first. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter here from Conway. We'll flip sides and back with Coastal's offense on the field. Right after this, again, it's the Shawna Clears on top of Georgia Southern early on, 7-3. Second quarter quickly underway. Fred Payton, maybe a little bit of miscommunication that time as a broken play. Result, though, is Payton's able to get back to the initial line of scrimmage. And now third down coming up for the Shawna Clears. I don't know if he went the wrong way or the running backs went the wrong way, but he started to hand it off to nobody, and he didn't panic. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Here you see Alex James in a running back again. Two out of three and third down. There's a big one here. Keep the drive going. First drive of the game was really good. And they're coming after him, too. At least they look like they are. See Rashad Bird, 40, 45. Looks like he's going right over to center. You just said Coastal two for three on third downs. This is a third down and 10. Peyton fires complete into Georgia Southern Territory at the 45-yard line. What a pass. Watch the linebacker try to get his hand up and just can't reach it. Jeremiah Miller, the redshirt freshman. We talk about a game of inches. Miller caught it. It could have been intercepted. could have been deflected. Big third down. Three out of four so far. Yeah, they faked the handoff up the middle, go across the middle. And incomplete. He was... Looking for Shadell Bell, that starting tight end again, who we saw him complete with back in the first quarter. Try to get that seam route that everybody runs for the tight end between the corner and the safety. Just overthrew him a little bit, really tight window because he didn't look off the safety. And Bell just couldn't bring it in. But not a bad play on first down. I like that call. Because if Bell catches it, there are 13 on the board right now. Peyton, six of nine for 57 yards and a touchdown. Here to start, and again, looking to the air right side. He's got a man open again, and out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Kion Tyler with another catch. 19-yard line, number 19. He throws this before Tyler breaks. He throws him open. What a great throw. The one hash to the opposite sideline. That's a big-time toss for a freshman. He was wide open. It's funny, they ran the ball a lot, a lot of deception first drive. Now they're chucking it. Down at 10. The give is to James. He gets inside the 15. Down to the 13. A gain of seven on first down. He's got a little hop step to him. I like his running style. Alex James now six carries for 30 yards. Is it just me or does it look like Fred Payton's got a lot more in the arsenal today? A lot more plays that, that they can go to with him than they have in the past. Yeah, a lot of misdirections. And, I mean, they've gone to both sides of the field. A lot of, I mean, more practice, more reps. Practice reps and more game reps because of injuries. The freshman had to be in there. Second down at three. Three wide receivers, and now they put a man in motion. They give it once again to James, but that time he's wrapped up and thrown back for a loss on the play back to the 12-yard line. Well, you saw that time his first move was sideways, and all that does is give Ty Phillips, the rest of that D-line, a chance to get there rather than the first move forward and then jump. But he had to go sideways sideways because there wasn't a hole, and the guys in the white shirts just caught him. And here we go again with another third down. Shot of clears three for four on third down. C.J. Marable now in at running back. Double tight ends here on the third and short. Fumble. And wise play by Peyton just to fall on it. Play was going to the short side of the field. And he wanted to go before he could. Or watch him. He starts running before he catches it. It wasn't a great snap, but it wasn't a terrible snap. But more importantly, he does a smart thing. Just follow him. Don't try to be the hero and create a fumble because you got a pretty good kicker. So here's Biscardi again. 12 of 15. On field goal opportunities this season. As long was a 50-yarder that he hit. And the season opener against the Gamecocks up in South Carolina.
This one plenty of leg and it is right down the middle. What a boot by Biscardi. Now 13 of 16 on the season. And that'll bring us to a break. 11.05 to play in the second quarter. Coastal on top, 10 to 3. Again, back here at Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina. You can see at the top of your screen a little bit of construction going on. They're actually in the process of putting an upper deck on this place. And we'll talk more about this later, but a huge announcement here for the city of Myrtle Beach starting in 2020. ESPN and Coastal Carolina announced today they will have a new bowl starting in 2020, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Fill this place up with teams from maybe the Sun Belt, maybe other leagues. The MAC be a fun time come down around Christmas time, I would assume. Yeah, Sun Belt Conference USA, the MAC. Yeah, from up in that Michigan area, they'd love to come down here. Heck yeah. December. Fair catch made for Georgia Southern, so they'll get starting field position out at the 25-yard line. Remember last week we were just talking about that. We weren't seeing any of the players making that fair yep. catch on the new kickoff rule. It seemed like we weren't seeing it, but we see it by Georgia Southern. Smart move. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Really high high hang time on the kick. This is this is a very good offense. You can see the numbers there, 10th in the Sun Belt pass offense. They're a better running team. Pass efficiency, they're the best. And today, 40 yards rushing, 6 yards passing. Trying to clear his defense playing well. Hand up up the middle and a pickup of three or four yards. Now, they did move the football. Georgia Southern yes. did. So it's it's not like their offense was stagnant. If you're just tuning in, it's not like they went three and out. They had a 12-play drive. They were threatening and all of a sudden had that third down uh, chop block penalty that took them back 15 yards. Yeah, and that, that just negates yeah, killed the half drive. the drive, basically. But they are very, they're a quick scoring team, not by throwing it because of the offense. Wesley Fields and it running back. Kennedy in motion. They'll give it to Fields, find some room off the right side and able to get forward to the 37-yard line. First down for Georgia Southern. You can see when Wesley Fields, he's the power guy. That's why he's getting the ball up the middle. High knees, runs with a forward lean, and gets a couple yards before anybody touches him most of the time because of the size of this offensive line, just under 300. That's for the season averages. So far, the averages aren't holding up today. Long way to go. Pitch out to Kennedy. And he sprints across the 40 up to the 42-yard line. Second down and five coming up for Georgia Southern. See Jeffrey Gunner chasing it down from behind, and it fits Wiley from that third level coming up to make the tackle and make it about five yards for the first down. Actually, that was Garrett, not Kennedy. Teo Garrett, Richard Sr. from Talladega, Alabama. Interesting, under center. They don't do this a lot. Pitch it out. Here's Kennedy. And out of bounds. Out near the initial line of scrimmage. So about third down and five now coming up for Georgia Southern. Tried to go short side there. And the defense was in the right place at the right time. Silas Kelly been injured. Back right there, number 29. Made a good stop, third and five. You got to eat. You got to be aggressive, but you got to have discipline, eye discipline, as the coaches told us, because they'll go one way and the ball won't be there. You think it will. We'll tell you how they practice that this week later. Third down and five. They fake the handoff up the middle. Pass to Kennedy looking for the first down, and he just got it, I think. Well, it's close. Yeah, it looked like from up here he got it easily, but the mark is right at the spot. You'll or right see him at the running plan. right at the sticks. They're marking at his third down. It's really close, but. I was going to say, in a day and a, an age where normally it seems like if it's close, they just give it to him. All of a sudden they're going to say, not good enough. There they go, first down. Do you see the thing on Twitter at the Alabama game where the referee Linesman puts the foot down, turns around to look where the marker is, and then moves it closer to the marker for Alabama earlier in the year. And, of course, they put an emoji of a big bag of cash right there, and they did it. It was classic. Cracked me up when I saw it. Cameras are always watching. Oh, absolutely. That's why everybody covers their mouth when they make the calls. So it is a first down. 
But you know what I mean? I mean, it seems like in the flow of games now, unless it's late in the game, they always just give it to yep, them. They do. And I was shocked that they weren't moving the chains. So first down and 10. Words with the handoff, a lot of room up the middle. And a lot of teal turf all the way down to the 22-yard line. So Wesley Fields breaks one big here on the running game for Georgia Southern. Derek Bush finally brings him down on an island. Derek Bush doesn't make that tackle. Six points for that man's football team. Wesley Huge Fields hole. so dangerous, not only as a runner, 660 yards, but he's actually second on the team in rushing behind Wirtz, but leads the team in receiving yards. So when you least expect it, it seems like they kind of throw it over the top to him. Here's Kennedy, and he'll pick up four or five yards on first down. That was a huge hole over the left side behind Colbert, Jeremiah Colbert, who started every game this year, and Aaron Dowdell, the other lineman, the left guard. And again, not Kennedy. It's Garrett. There's Dowdell right there. I fault again. Garrett, again, the redshirt senior from Alabama. Well, he's a great story. He was academically ineligible, not only for one year, but for two years. Worked so hard, Nate, and there you see him number 15. Now it's Dean's List. That's, that's what college athletics is all about. And here he is again, Garrett's up the middle and down at the 12 yard line. Over 400 yards rushing. I think that's Tyron Jackson down there on the field who made the tackle. And I don't know if he got kicked. Well, that is not good news, obviously, for Coastal Carolina. Three sacks on the year. Nine and a half tackles for a loss. A break in the action with Jackson down. Coastal with the lead. Well, the good news is we did see Taryn Jackson walking off the field. But the bad news was he definitely needed help coming off the field and definitely was favoring that left leg. So... We'll keep our eyes on that. Taryn Jackson, the sophomore from Aiken, South Carolina. Again, one of the team leaders in sacks and tackles for a loss. So obviously a loss here for Coastal Carolina's defense. First and 10 here for Georgia Southern on the move. Wirtz is going to keep it. Finds room on the left side. Foot race and leaps into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. The option at its best. He holds the ball and the running back in his last second. We told you he's the leading rusher on the team. Probably a decent hurdler, too. So dangerous with both his legs and his throwing ability. Jumping into the end zone. And that will be his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. The extra point is on the way. And it is good to tie this game at 10. So Georgia Southern with the counter. 6.35 left to play in the second quarter. We are tied at 10. A 12-yard rushing score by Shy Wirtz, the starting quarterback for Georgia Southern, capping off a nine-play, 75-yard drive that took four and a half minutes. And with 6.35 to play here in the second quarter, we are tied at 10. That is option football at its best. When I mean, you got a quarterback that can really scoot when he wants to run with it, that makes the option football even better. Shy Wirtz, if you're a Sunbelt football fan, not good news for you. He's going to be here for two more years. He's only a sophomore. Well, you're a Georgia Southern fan, real good news. You know, early on, Nate, I'd have to say both offenses probably feeling pretty good. Two yep. long scoring drives Agreed. for both sides. And this one will be fielded right at the goal line. And a big hit laid on Tyler at the 16-yard line. Well, they got number one listed at Ellis Richardson. He's the tight end we talked about on offense. And if he's also playing special teams, what a lick. Watch this. Maybe you should have raised that hand for the old fair catch. And it is. It is Ellis Richardson. Yep. You know, a lot of times we'll see double numbers on teams, guys who are the same number as a starter on special teams. But that, that, was, was, the that was the guy. He what gets a hit. hit, and now he dishes it out on special teams. Gotta love that. Up 
pitch at the last second. This is going to go as a loss of two yards. And, wow, Georgia Southern is fired up. I never saw him pitch the ball. I thought he got tackled in the backfield, but he did get rid of it to no advantage. And he took the blow as well, talking about the quarterback freshman, Fred Payton. Second down to 12 coming up for Coastal Carolina. Well, it's like the best of both worlds for Ellis Richardson, isn't it? Playing offense and then be able to go hit, put a hit on somebody. Nail somebody. Yeah. Guaranteed he played both ways in high school. Peyton in trouble as the pocket collapses. The ball is loose at the 12-yard line and a battle for it. Tunnel white jerseys on top. We'll see who's on it at the bottom of the pile. And Georgia Southern recovers the fumble. At it again. Coming into today, number one in the country with a plus 21 turnover margin. Big Raymond Johnson, the third. That is 20. That's another big turnover, and he will get a big old chain that says Gata on it. Watch 92. Left side of your picture. Ball gets knocked out, and then it's anybody's football. A lot more white jerseys than teal ones, and Raymond Johnson ends up with it. So the Eagles now plus 22 in turnover margin. Unbelievable. Opportunistic defense. Fields and rights in there. Fields gets it, pushes his way down to about the five. Well, you said it to play before the turnover. That defense just looked fired up, and they get all over. Peyton on the pitch play, and then on the pass play, they stripped it loose. And it all started with the hit by Ellis Richardson. Yep. I mean, we yeah, were kind of joking right. about it, but that's really what fired him up. True. There's Shy Wirtz, the sophomore quarterback out of Clinton, South Carolina. Talk to Coach Lunsford. I said, Coach, from the outside looking in, he looks cool under pressure all the time. He said he is. He makes mistakes, but he lets it go and gets on to the next play. Great asset for a QB. Kennedy and Fields in the backfield. Wirtz keeps it. Angles back up the middle and gets down to about the three-yard line. I don't know if somebody didn't run the wrong way there. Because it looked like Wirtz was going to hand it to somebody that wasn't there, and then he just took it himself and got a yard, yard and a half. Third down. And they can get a first down inside the three, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Three wide receivers spread out. Fields in the backfield on third down and one. They give it to Fields trying to back his way in, and I think he's just short. He is. Here comes the field goal team. What a stop by the front four for Coastal Carolina. Watch the replay here. Fake the jet sweep. Give it to Fields up the middle, and then... Good job by, it looked like Jonathan Clayton and company, 99 got in there first. Yeah, it was Clayton who was the first one to get his arm on him. Good move to kick it. This is for the lead. And you got a kid that can bomb it. Tyler Bass from 20. And that is easy money for Tyler Bass. He's two for two today. Now the 44-yarder earlier, and this one a little chip shot from 20. And Georgia Southern on top for the first time here tonight. Three thirty-nine left to play before halftime. Could be last team that gets it, wins it. Whoever gets it, scoring. Fumble deep in the Sean Declares territory gave them an easy field and an easy field goal. Again, Georgia Southern with seven wins coming into tonight. Coastal Carolina with five. That is one of the many things that matter today. Well, attack works with smarts. They did it. Works has just been a little better so far. Special teams have to create momentum. Unfortunately, momentum went to Georgia Southern on that tackle. The back line defense can't get fooled if they do it six points for Georgia Southern. If they're committed to the run, they make things happen. And lastly, Georgia Southern must put pressure on the quarterback, Deshaun's quarterback. They haven't done that yet. Fred Payton's been pretty good. 
until that last series. Put pressure on him and created a fumble. Well, this kid's got legs, doesn't he? Well, he does. He just blasts it easily into the end zone and out to the 25 here for Coastal Carolina. We'll see what Jamie Chadwell does now. When he went to the passing game in the previous series, they moved right down the field. That last series, Georgia Southern got on his freshman quarterback quickly, messed up one pitch play, and then finally stripped it loose from him. Well, you kind of get the feeling this is big right here. Georgia Southern, a lot of momentum, got the turnover, yep. took the lead. And now Coastal's offense back on the field with a chance here with 3.39 before the break. Pretty quick half because Georgia Southern just doesn't throw the ball much. Payton looking to pass down the middle. Nobody was there. He was looking for Malcolm Williams, who has not made a catch yet today. He has had at least one catch in 14 straight games. Look like he thought Williams was going to keep going, and Williams turned it up, or turned it, flattened it out because of the zone defense and just miscommunication between the two. I'm sure he told the offensive line, let's give our guy a chance to throw the ball. Just a little time. He doesn't need a lot of time, just a little. Second down and 10. They give it to James. He's had a lot of success here in the first half. Jumps forward, picks up about three or four yards. James with his eighth carry and now 33 yards. A little draw play action as he goes back. Just gives it to James. He gets those little jump cuts. Gives him an advantage. Coming up on three minutes now left to play here before halftime. Chauncey's red, white, and blue for Military Appreciation Day on the helmet. Under three minutes now left. That one tipped and again nearly intercepted. That was a good read by the quarterback, Payton. He wanted to go outside on the wheel route. It wasn't there, so he just got the dump underneath and put a little touch on it. Didn't zip it in there, but couldn't uh, complete it. So quickly, Georgia Southern's defense forces another short drive here for Coastal Carolina as they will punt it away. That's and not what you want to do and use very little clock, giving the ball back with a lot of time left on the clock. Especially with that man right there, number 12, Wesley Kennedy. This one, a high wobbling spiral that's going to check up and take a favorable bounce for the Shauna Clears inside the 25, all the way down to the 20. One of the Shauna Clears players thought that it was touched by Georgia Southern, so picked it up and tried to advance it, but they're going to say it was downed by touch not by Coastal bad, Carolina at the 21. not a bad move. If you think it touched them, grab the football. If it did touch them, referees aren't going to stop the play. And they're discussing it. Did it touch anybody? I didn't think it did. So the ball to the 21-yard line now for Georgia Southern. We'll look at this again. Ooh, that's close. That's close. It might have hit the leg. Well, if anything, it hit a Coastal Carolina player, though. Well, nonetheless, he's just playing football. So again, Georgia Southern, 2.37 to play in the first half with the ball at the 21. It works with the pitch. Kennedy to the outside. He finds room and jumps forward to the 29-yard line. Just shy of the first down. to be about a yard and a half shy. He just turns on the Jets here. Nice block on the outside against the linebacker, Kelly. But his buddies helped him out. Big game, but not a first down. The clock continues to run. They got Logan right back in at running back. Again, six foot two twenty-five. He's terrific when you just need a couple of yards. They went to him earlier. They fake it to him here. Works looking downfield and just throws it away as he's hit. We talked about the back level guys not getting fooled. The Chanticleers did not get fooled on that one. It was good coverage. The pocket collapsed. I don't know if he got hit, but he threw a lame duck up there. Um, good job by the entire defense. 
Third down. That's the thing Not that's so dangerous about this offense, like you're just saying, Nate. They just run it, run it, yep. run it, and then at the last second, you get a guy with a little wheel route out of the backfield who sprints free, but good job by Coastal to pick it up. Third down and short. They give it to Fields. He's hit at the 30. It's close. I don't think he's got it. By the by, the, where they're spotting the ball, he's about a half a yard short. That's the man you want to give it to in short yardage. Got a hit there on first contact, and I couldn't quite see who that was who came from the left. It might have been Jeffrey Gunter. He doesn't have it, because the ball's got to get up to the 31-yard line. Actually, it wasn't Gunter. It was Gallagher who had that first hit. Boy, well, Teddy's been they, so good this last the month. Ball. They didn't give him much at all. Half a yard shy. Georgia Southern talking about it. Play clock is down to 10. Wirtz is still out there. No, they're not going to run a play. They're just going to let the clock go down to give Coastal Carolina less time when they get the football. They're going to stop it right here. So Chad Lunsford, the head coach for the Eagles, calls the timeout with one second on the play clock. And 1-12 to play. Look at that fourth down defense. John Clear has been really good this year, and they just did it again. Stop them on third, and they're going to get the ball back. It's not a lot of time left, but they're going to get the ball back unless something crazy happens. As they said, they're going to line up to punt the ball. Coastal's got all three of their times out, time outs left as well. Can you put the block on here? I don't think so. I think you're at home. Down by three. Yeah, not the end of the world. Things going have gone your way. Three. You've already had one turnover. I don't, I don't think I'd risk another penalty. Let's try and set up for the return here. It'll be Tyler back to receive. Bowerly out to punt for the first time. Low bouncing end over end, and yeah, that's going to check punt. up at about the 37 yard line. and. Decent field position here for Coastal Carolina now with 64 seconds to play. 64 seconds and three times they're allowed to stop it, which is a plus. If you're Coastal Carolina right now, you're just thinking, let's get 35 and give our man a chance to kick a long one, Massimo Biscardi. Of course you'd like a touchdown, but the smart thing is you can go over the middle of the field whenever you want throwing it because you have the timeouts left. And if you go out on the outside, they've had a couple deep outs where they've had advantages and just get the guy out of bounds. Got to give him time to throw it if you're going to throw it. See Coastal. how aggressive Coastal wants to be here on first down and 10. Peyton with the draw play, finds room on the left side, takes a big hit, but picks up seven yards. And they can call timeout if they want. But yeah, the clock not, continues to run. Not doing that. Should have gone behind the blocker right here, right in front of him. Clock's down to 39. I mean, when that play ended, there was about 54 seconds on the clock. So 18 seconds run off. And now Peyton in trouble. Scrambles out of it, throws downfield, and it is caught for the first down. More importantly, out of bounds. So they'll move the chains, and they will not start the clock yet. Escapism here. Squares up, throws it for a completed pass, and now they just called it incomplete. Yep, they changed the call and say incomplete. Well, that just wasted the time and it didn't give you the first down. I guess he didn't have control as he went out of bounds. Third down and so third down and three. 28 seconds to play. Talking about Maribel, that's who caught it. They attempted to catch it. Handoff up the middle and nowhere to go. Ty Phillips, the nose guard with the tackle. Now Georgia Southern stops the clock because of the down situation. Yeah, they want to get the ball back in the hands of Wesley Kennedy at least one more return and then Turn over to Shy Wirtz with a chance here. China clears. We're just happy to run the clock out, go in the locker room and discuss it being down three. But now because of that defensive stand, they're going to get, Coastal's going to have to punt the ball back to 
toward the sun. Coastal still all three timeouts. Yeah, that's unusual. So quick break in the action here. Again, 24 seconds left to play. One timeout left for Georgia Southern. Again, Wesley Kennedy is one of their punt returners. Also their starting running back. So they'll send Kennedy out there. And a big punt coming up here for Coastal Carolina. Charles Overson out there again. Average is just under 43. He needs that or more right here. And he did. End over end sends Kennedy all the way back to the 12 as he lunges just to hang on to it. What a kick by Overson. That's what they needed. Pin him deep with 18 seconds to go and play smart and go in down three. Of course, this team is happy to be up three because they got a quick touchdown scored on him by the shot that clears early, and that man engineered some nice drives, and now his team's up three. It looks like Georgia Southern is just going to take a knee here now that they're pinned all the way down inside their 12 and they will. So 18 seconds left. Shy takes the knee. No timeout called by Coastal Carolina. And we will head to halftime here from Conway, South Carolina. A lot of scoring done early on. And Georgia Southern with the field goal advantage. Shy Wirtz and the Eagles on top 13 to 10. As we have Back at the half here again from Brooks Stadium, Conway, South Carolina. A 13 to 10 lead for Georgia Southern here at the half. Again, the total offense just about dead even. Really the big deal difference, Nate, was the fumble. Yep. Led to a short field and just an eight yard scoring touchdown for Georgia Southern. So, again, that's something that really is the MO of this defense, is creating turnovers, plus 22 this season. That's an amazing number, and it's a very opportunistic. And it's even more surprising that the Shawnee Clears went right down the field, didn't score every time, but moved the football. And then in that one series, and you said it very smartly, they nailed them on the kickoff, and it kind of got the defense fired up. Um, they collapsed around Peyton. Messed up a pitch play that they didn't fumble, and then the next time they knocked him loose at a very short field and went in for the touchdown. There's see Biscardi warming up. It will be the Shauna Clears to kick off to Georgia Southern here as we start the second half. Well, Nate, uh, you had a chance to get, go down and tour this exhibit before the game, and again, it is Military Appreciation Day here at Coastal Carolina. That is the Remembering Our Fallen memorial exhibits and it honors everyone who has been killed either duty in active duty non-active military yeah. duty while defending our country since september 11th and a very moving exhibit that they had downstairs on your way and in when you walk through it, it, it it's it knocks you back to reality and the lady that runs the whole thing told me that's only 70 percent of all the people and i think there's four thousand pictures there it's it's just it's crazy, and it's going to be at the Auburn-Alabama game. They travel with the whole um, setup. It's going to be at the Army-Navy game as well. And they go around the country, and hence military appreciation day because of the hats on the coaches, on the helmets, and then this display as well. And again, honoring the country's fallen soldiers, all of them, since the war on terror began September 11th of 2001 until today. If you want some more information, go to remembering our fallen dot org remembering our fallen dot org i asked the lady how they how do you fund this she said 100 percent by donations no government funding. so again military appreciation day you see the guys in their digital camo hats seen to go on around the nfl over the last yep. few weeks as well and chauncey on the helmet is in red white and blue instead of teal which i love that's perfect there is red tate the freshman quarterback and i didn't notice the logos on the coaches hats Chauncey's in red, white, and blue as well. That's cool. Joe Moglia, sixth season as a head coach here for Coastal Carolina, 25th season as a football coach. Of course, was a leader in the financial world with Merrill Lynch, TD Ameritrade, 
a leader, no doubt, in that industry, and now a leader on the field here for the shot of clears as their head coach. I read his book this summer, and the way we trade stocks in America corporately is because it's all over. It changed the way it happens. It's crazy. Very influential in the business world. Now he's trying to be influential in the lives of these student athletes as well. Second half underway. Here is Kennedy running up, making the catch at the nine across the 20. And out close to the 30 yard line. Good field position here for the Georgia Southern offense to start the second half. Shy Words back in the first half for Georgia Southern. We talked about him being a dual threat quarterback. Well, he did most of it with his legs. He had three carries, 20 yards, just three for four for 11 yards passing. Yeah, two of them were, we talked about during one break, the jet sweep, and jet sweep, which is considered a pass, and a screen pass. So they don't need to throw it to be effective, as evidenced by a three-point lead. Handoff to Kennedy, and wrapped up and tackled after about a two-yard gain. Heck of a play on the defense to catch up to him. Not an easy guy to catch up to. They can go sideways and catch him from behind. It's not an easy task, agreed. Kennedy, 5'10", 175 out of Savannah, Georgia. Eighth in the conference in all-purpose yards per game. He's averaging, Nate, just under 100 yards of total offense per game, 99.4. Kelly. Kennedy. Kelly and Gallagher tied with four tackles apiece on that defense, and Heft has six to lead them. So it's get there and let your teammates help you. And now Fields with the carry as he is tackled forward to the 35-yard line, and Fields another one. He's out of Americus, Georgia, second on the team rushing. Leads the team in receiving yards. There he is, number 21. He's been with this program for a long time. He was actually offensive MVP of the GoDaddy Bowl back in 2015 for Georgia Southern. And a lot of times the front four for the Shawnee Clears have just gotten a foot and they've tripped up the running back and done a good job of it. You can see big number 99, Jonathan Clayton leading the charges. Big play. Third down and four. Wirtz gives it to Fields and he'll get to the 40 yard line just shy of it, but enough for the first down. We talked about it many times. He's the power guy. This is the, the basis of his whole offense is right up the gut. You can see a big hole and kind of tackled from behind. As Wallace Cowan's 92 brings him down from behind. There's been a lot of guys chasing from behind to make tackles. Not the ideal way, but at least they're making the tackle. Here's Garrett, who had some big runs back in the first half. He's at it again. Cuts up the middle. A foot race inside the 10. What a run again by Mateo Garrett, the red shirt senior. Watch Mallory Claiborne, the corner, number seven, is going to come into your picture. He's playing the receiver running wide. Then he realizes, whoops, there goes the runner. Just gets a like flag football. Out of his back. I think it was Jave Brown, the deep safety for Coast, who just was able to trip him up. First and goal, like a six. They get chunk yards, and they don't have to throw it to do it. First down and goal for Georgia Southern, trying to extend their lead. They give it to Fields right up the middle. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. But he touched him because the big boys up front did a heck of a job of clearing out a lane for 21 field. Watch this hole. Lead, bop, lead blocker is number 39. It comes through to try to help him out, but they don't even need him. Boy, what a job by Jacob Cooper and Brian Miller. 64 and 56 on that offensive line. And just Logan pulling to the left Logan and just right. wiping out. I tried to clean it up, but they didn't even need his block because of those big guys up front. Tyler Bass puts it through, and Georgia Southern extends their lead. You can have big linemen that are that quick to get out in front of a running back that's that powerful. Positive combination for an easy six.
Bell took just five plays, 71 yards, two minutes and 34 seconds as Georgia Southern has extended their lead 20 to 10. Well, we talked about how big this game is for Coastal Carolina with five wins, one away from bowl eligibility. How about the Sun Belt, Nate? Troy, Georgia Southern, App State, ULM, and Arkansas State are already all eligible. Very impressive and possibly two more. As you see at the bottom, good. eligibility does not guarantee a bowl selection, but as we right. all know, six goes a long way for these schools. That's kind of the minimum mark you obviously need to get to. Although, remember a few years ago, there were a couple of teams, including I think Nebraska, who got in with five wins yep. just because they didn't Ran have it. enough six-win teams. Too many bowls. Yeah, I think we're over 40-something now. Again, 12-22 to play. Quick scoring drive for Georgia Southern. Again, 20 to 10. Eagles come into today 7 and 3. You know, they started the season 7 and 1. The Eagles did. Now have lost back to back games, so they're trying to get back in the win column. You know, Coastal's been a, done a great job of adjusting at halftime in the previous games. We'll see what they do here. Run up the middle, and that's going to end up picking up about two or three yards. Tough two or three yards. Yeah. That play looked like it was going to go nowhere. But Alex James able to pound out pickup of three. And we see for Coastal Carolina, big plays. 17 of the 36 touchdowns have been of 20 or more yards. And we want to set you up by running the ball and then fool you and go behind you. And this young man's got the arm to do it. They fake it to James. Pass is complete. And I'll tell you what, Fred Payton, the freshman, has found some comfort and thrown to Isaiah Likely, his freshman tight end. Yeah, Randy Wade, the linebacker, was all over him. Randy Wade Jr., excuse me, was all over him and still made the completion. And not quite a first down, but not a whole lot to get, maybe half a yard. It's when you get Payton in the open field, he can make things happen. They're bunched up in the middle to try to stop Third down and short and a high snap. And Merrill will just slides and recovers it at the 15-yard line. Second time today. A fumbled snap for the shot of clears. Now fourth down at 20 is left to put it away. Yeah, Trey Carter just chucked one over his head. You got to make the smart play. C.J. Marable did. He's got to fall on it. Don't pick it up and try to be a hero. Overson from his own goal line now for Coastal to put it away. Yeah, Wesley Kennedy stands at his own 45 for the Eagles. Wobbling, Fields makes the fair catch. Not a bad kick from your own goal line. Yeah, 55 yards. At least he got him in the other half of the field. Georgia Southern's offense back out onto the field for Georgia Southern against some really good drives for their offense. Way back in the first quarter, their first touchdown was 12 plays. They were only credited for 31 yards. They had 15 taken away on the penalty, but still come away with the score. Just got to stay disciplined on defense and try to get the football back. Only down 10, two scores, but 10 points. Pitch to Kennedy. A ton of speed, able to get the corner. And gets out of bounds for the first down at the 41-yard line. He is so quick. Watch this explosion as soon as he gets it. It's Ellis Richardson with a nice block right there, number one on the outside. And Jeffrey Gunter chased him down. Just couldn't catch him. Talking about Georgia Southern to get a 12-play scoring drive, a 9-play 75-yard scoring drive. They had the short one with the fumble. And now when you worry about the outsides, when they get you up the middle. That's why this offense is so difficult to stop. First and 10 from the 41. They did stop it up the middle. They go to Fields for a pickup of a yard. Well, total offense was just about tied at half. Coastal had 138 total yards, and it was Georgia Southern with 136. But so far, Coastal with minus 12 here in the second half. And Georgia Southern up to 221 total yards. And a minus 12 because of the snap over. Peyton's head. Second and nine. Garrett's 
in the backfield again, number 15. Working on a good night for Georgia Southern. They fake it to him. Wirtz tries to keep it, and he's not going to go anywhere. He was not fooled at all as it was Chandler Christ who was on him from the start here. Talking to the coaches this week for the Chanticleers, they said you have to have eye discipline. We said, well, how do you practice against this? They said, we practice without a football. So run the play, but nobody's got the ball, so everybody's got to be responsible for who they're supposed to be responsible for rather than watching the football. Because you stare at the football, you get beat against this offense. In this series, it seems to be working. Big chance for Coastal's defense here on third down and 12. Wirtz looking to pass from the pocket, scrambles, throws downfield, and it is nearly intercepted. Wow, for the Shawna clears a missed opportunity there as it was right in the hands of Silas Kelly. Boy, he had it too, right between the two and the nine. Watch this. They flush him out of the pocket. He's throwing on the run. Watch 29, Silas Kelly. He's got the ball, and they knew the sideline was there, and he probably tried to make sure his feet were down, just couldn't get it. Nobody, nobody's more disappointed than the sophomore Kelly. They're coming. Bowerly. Able to get it away, a wobbling spiral, and a fair catch at the 12 for Coastal Carolina. 8.29 to play. We're in the third quarter here from Conway, South Carolina. It's still Georgia Southern with a 10-point lead. Back here at Brooks Stadium in Conway in the third quarter, 8.29 to play, a 20-10 lead for Georgia Southern. It is senior day here from Brooks Stadium. However, on senior day, Look at Coastal Carolina's offensive line. No seniors. Nate, this is the second youngest team in FBS. The been there, done that factor just isn't there for the line. But the future bodes well. And there won't be any graduating seniors on senior day for the O-line because they're on it. Pretty amazing. Second youngest team in the nation. 76% of their roster is underclassmen. Second only to Illinois for the Big Ten has 76 and a half percent. They win. See the yard mark right at the top of your picture. So they're a couple yards short. Third and a long two. Marable's trying to get that shoulder pad tucked in. Their official should come over and help me. Can't get that left side tucked in. Make it third down and three officially here for Coastal Carolina. They're daring him to throw it. They got the box loaded up with eight players. Payton tries to take it himself, falls forward to the 21. He's going to be a yard shy. Yeah, there are just too many guys to block up front. Payton's hurt. And the officials blow the whistle to stop the clock. There is Fred Payton, the freshman quarterback, down for Coastal Carolina. So we will take a break as well as they take a look at Fred Payton, Georgia Southern with the lead. Well, the good news is Fred Payton's walking off under his own power gingerly, but walking off. And we'll see the end of this play. Big number 95, it's 275 pounds on his neck going the wrong way. And you can see his neck kind of snap and then snap back. But he walked off under his own power. So on fourth down, Costa will punt it away. Overson having a good day, and this one will be inside the 35, out at about the 32 or 33 yard line. They, they will evaluate the young quarterback, Fred Payton, on the sidelines. Next time the Shining Clears get the ball, we might see him. We might see Kilton Anderson. Shy Wirtz, number four. Richard, sophomore starting quarterback, back on the field for Georgia Southern. Again, the Eagles at seven and three. With a 10 point lead, just under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. Wirtz with the pitch. Kennedy down the sideline, cuts it back, and tackled from behind at the 43-yard line. So many 
different weapons out of the backfield here for the Eagles. Great relationship, number 12 to number four, Kennedy to the, re to the quarterback. He's in a proper position, so Wirtz can, can pitch it to him anytime he wants. He waited to the last possible second, and hence you have a huge chunk of yardage play. Good execution. First down attempt from the 42. Fakes the handoff up the middle. Pitches it to Kennedy. Inside. I think it's to the 35-yard line. Well, you know, Nate, when we were talking with Chad Lunsford, the head coach for Georgia Southern, so many people talk about the defensive schemes against this option-style offense and how difficult it is to defend. You know what? It's not easy for these guys up front either. And we found out just how difficult it is for the offensive line. For yeah, the, there's a lot I mean, it, of different decisions. It's a total decisions. read by everyone on the team. A lot of decisions to be made at the snap yeah. each particular play. I mean, these guys make it look easy, but there is constant communication going on between the line and Wirtz and the running backs. Field squirts free inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 8-yard line. Talked in the open about the second and third levels. Watch how far Fields gets here. There's the first level, now he's to the linebackers, and now you can see Silas Kelly chasing him. It's up to a defensive back or a linebacker there from the backside to finally knock him out of bounds. Wesley Fields out of Americas, Georgia. 15 carries, 117 yards, and a touchdown here this afternoon, or tonight rather. This offense has a cumulative effect on the defense. It just wears you down. You make a split-second decision wrong. Fields that up the middle and down to the two-yard line. Fitz Watley to safety had to come up to make the tackle, but huge gain and inside the two. Looking for his second touchdown of the night. See if they try and give it to him again to pay it off here on this drive. 4.45 to play here in the third quarter. Field stays in alongside Logan Wright. Fields up the middle, dives in, and scores again. His second touchdown of the night as Georgia Southern extends their lead. Well, you like it when you give it to the young man that got you down in that position to pay it off. Right side of the line just kind of blocks, excuse me, left side of the line blocks a little to the right and field, just finds the opening, didn't have far to go, and punched it in for six. Boy, and Coastal Carolina, Nate, had it sniffed out. They had someone diving in from that left side, but Logan Wright with a terrific block. And now the extra point by Tyler Bass makes it 27-10. to 10. I'm not sure if we'll get a chance to see that again, but again, Coastal Carolina either had a safety or a linebacker coming in from that left side. And you know, looking to try and get some penetration, disrupt the play. But that's when Logan Wright came in and just laid a perfect block to free fields to score. That's the extra blocker. Just to, and it doesn't take long. It's a split second. Fields is passed it in. Fields now 125 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Well, just a couple of minutes ago, we were talking about the youth on the Shauna Clears roster, 76%. How about Georgia Southern? 30 freshmen, 30 sophomores, 82 total underclassmen, or 71%. It's a young football game with these two teams. It's a lot, and production as well. And 17 carries, officially 125 yards for Fields. Two touchdowns at scoring play, five plays, 67 yards. Georgia Southern doing it quickly all of a sudden here in their last couple of drives. We'll come out and see if Fred Payton is healthy or we see Kilton Anderson to run the offense. This one will go into the end zone. So that's the 25 for Coastal Carolina. Well, if it is Kilton Anderson, He's one of the few seniors on the squad here for Coastal on senior night. And whether Fred Payton comes back to play or not, we just hope he's healthy. And there's Kilton Anderson coming in. So Kilton will take over. Played briefly last week, 5 of 13. 
He's appeared in most of the games of the season, but he did miss a couple of games with a high ankle sprain. So he'll take over on first and 10 from the 25. Pitch out to the right. And out near the 40-yard line, so a nice gain on first down for Coastal Carolina. Great extra effort by C.J. Marable right there. Thought he was going to get a couple yards. He just kept fighting and got a bunch on the first down. Player down for Georgia Southern on the defensive side. I think it's Lane Acton. Yep, number 37, the outside linebacker. Randy Clausen, head of the athletic training staffs out there to make sure he's okay. Those athletic training people do a phenomenal job. They have to take care of a lot of different bodies. That's why there's a bunch of them on the staff for football. Trying to rally the troops right there on offense. Well, while we take a look at Coastal Carolina, 5-5 five and five on the season. Again, still looking for win number six. If they can't come from behind and do it today, Nate, their last opportunity will be next week on the road against South oh, yeah, Alabama. Yeah, now, obviously, South Alabama has had their struggles this season, but it's always tough to go on the road. Yeah, it is. Well, the Chanticleers are used to it, unfortunately, because of Florence. They were gone for three weeks from campus, played a home game at Campbell University. They had to move the game, as a lot of schools canceled their games. Um, so they're used to being on the road, but it's just not fun. Multiple quarterbacks in almost every game, 9 of 11 this year. And Kilton Anderson, the senior, with Maribel right behind him. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Anderson clapping. Now looks to the sideline. Plenty of time left on the play clock. Anderson changing the play here for the shot of clears. Gives it to Maribel. He goes up the middle and picks up two yards. South Alabama, by the way, two and eight. They're on the road tonight, and so they're giving Louisiana all they can handle right now. South Alabama and Louisiana tied at 24 in the third quarter. So even though, again, they've struggled at two and eight, that's no gimme for no, Coastal on the is. road. They win, that'll be their senior day, last home game. Yep. Of course, they want to win that one as well. Three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Anderson looking to pass, throws a dart across the middle and incomplete. Just beyond the outstretched left hand of Javon Hiley. Little skinny post here. Tries to just throw him open and just throws it a touch too far and Kendall Vildor 20 on the coverage right there. A good pass, just not a great one. He's almost there. The top of your picture, third down. The secondary for Georgia Southern is really good. Kendall Vildor, like you just said, seven career interceptions. Joshua Moon has five career interceptions. And they play a lot of man coverage. So you're on an island out there. Now it's covered two this time. Third, third down. Third down for Coastal. Complete to Maribel for a pickup of a yard. And that will be it. So fourth down and seven. Coming up now for Coastal with just about three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Tries to dump it off in the middle right there. It's a really good tackle inside. I think it was Chris Harris, 32. And a linebacker for the Eagles. Went to Marcio Reese to make a tackle. I want to say his name. I've been practicing <laughs> it all week. Number 33. Oh, that's a bomb. Kennedy. Right hand in the air, calls for the fair catch. Great punt. Inside the 20. Charles Overson having a good night punting for Coastal Carolina. Shy Wirtz is only a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, but he commands this offense and he's run it pretty well all year and pretty well tonight. 287 total yards so far. How about what that young man and his family went through during the offseason? A grease fire totally destroyed their home. Yeah, it's tough. And, right the, and the Georgia Southern community totally rallied around him and able to you know, set up funds to basically get his family back on track and get him another house. And You know, that's it. 
it's such a difficult line that you have to be careful with that Georgia Southern had to manage because with all the NCAA regulations, you know, it's not like you could just give money to a family yep. and help them rebuild their lives. So, I mean, they really had to jump through a lot of hoops to make sure that it was done the right way. But what a great job by the Georgia Southern community to rally around him and his family and help get them back on their feet. That was just a terrible offseason for Ward's third, family. Third and eight's no big deal to this young man after what he's been through. Just another football play. And they give the handoff up the middle. That's going to be close to the first down for Fields. Big turn, Jackson, who was injured earlier, is back in the football game. That's good to see as well. You see Jackson just gets a hand on it. Fooled our cameraman a little bit there with the fake. What you can't do is start to tackle the football if you're the Chanticleers because these guys can break tackles and take it a long way. Look at that club on Javi Brown's hand because of the injury. You know, that's a lot of padding on there. Garretton Fields in the backfield on first down. The give is to Fields. Still on his feet, breaking tackles and spun down at the 42-yard line. First down for Georgia Southern. Taron Jackson again on the tackle way down the field. And Jave Brown's pad fell off, I think. That was Taron Jackson's pad around his waist. It's just a hand warmer type thing. See, great job by the cameraman that time. Eye discipline, right? That's what you talked about That's the first exactly time. Exactly right. Discipline. Don't get fooled, guys and girls. <laughs> Easy up here. Tougher down there. Yeah, tonight we get a nice, comfortable wide angle. Again, handoff goes back up the middle. Logan Wright breaks free down the sideline, inside the five, and in for the touchdown. Well, we've talked about it many times when you need a few yards. He's about six foot 225. This time he breaks a couple tackles and he is gone. Add some stats to that freshman output offensively. Logan Wright with a big one, red shirt freshman, as you just said, 225. Goes right through Teddy Gallagher's tackle and then a few more into the end zone for the Eagles. Tyler Bass, it's good. And Georgia Southern, who had just a 13 to 10 lead at halftime, now leads it 34 to 10 with 37 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 59 yards on the carry. I mean, Nate, there's just so many of them. I mean, we've talked about Wesley Fields all night, Wesley Kennedy all night, Monteo Garrett, who's had a big game, and then Logan Wright, the freshman, breaks two tackles. There's 59 yards. It's funny, when they list the depth chart for Georgia Southern, they put a quarterback and a backup quarterback, and at running back, they just put five names. And they don't tell you where they play because it doesn't matter because they all play back there at various times. And they're all just called running backs. And that running back just went 59 yards for a touchdown. 358 wow. rushing yards for Georgia Southern. Now, keep in mind, they only have 11 yards passing, but when you run that well, who needs to pass? Coming up here, I was listening, and they said there were three different games on the radio today, and a total of three teams had two passes for the game. One of them was Army, of course, and I can't remember the other two, but you don't have to throw it. You run it like that. Another deep kick into the end zone and out to the 25 for Coastal Carolina with 37 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Four plays, 82 yards. I mean, listen to these last scoring drives here for Georgia Southern. Again, that most recent one, four plays, 82 yards. The one before that, five plays, 71 yards. The one before that, a little bit longer, nine plays, 75 yards. And this offense is clicking, and the defense just can't catch up. It is very efficient and very productive. Kilton Anderson, again, the senior, taking over for Fred Payton, the freshman quarterback who was injured earlier this quarter. Kilton throws it too high over to the right side, leading Maribel just a little bit too much. What a wheel route. Couldn't connect. 
Williams, Kilton Anderson, they get out of Naples, Florida here on senior night, getting some snaps. This final game on the teal turf. Kilton began his career at Fresno State and then ended up transferring here to Coastal. Delayed handoff and Georgia Southern not fooled at all. Raymond Johnson first to make contact. Yeah, he just held his ground and waited. If it would have been a pass play, he would have rushed, but he just waited and caught that man, Marable, for a very short, if any, game. Ten seconds left here in the quarter. It looks like Coastal Carolina is going to let the clock run out and take this one to the fourth quarter. What a third quarter it was for Georgia Southern. Again, a 13-10 lead at the half for Georgia Southern, but after the third quarter, the Eagles now on top, 34-10. to Fourth quarter comes your way next here at ESPN. Start of the fourth quarter here from Conway, South Carolina, alongside Nate Ross. I'm Jeff McCarriger, and that is another big play for the Georgia Southern defense. This time it's Raymond again, wasn't it? Raymond Johnson, yeah, Raymond again, Johnson again comes around from the right side. Anderson's got time, but maybe not enough time. Beat Stephen Badosky on a little bull rush there. And Knocked the shot to clear back, trying to make a third down, couldn't make it happen. Boy, and that defense, Nate, ever since that hit on special teams right, the tackle, by the, the tight end, off. Ellis Richardson, that fired up this defense for Georgia Southern. They have been just absolutely clicking on defense ever since. A high, wobbly punt that actually takes a favorable bounce here for Coastal Carolina out near the 50-yard line. Darian Anderson for Georgia Southern slipped and fell. And it almost hit him when he fell down. It didn't. So it was not a live ball, but it came close. I don't know if he slipped or he just tried to get out of the way. Nonetheless, right around midfield, Georgia Southern football. Flight number 37 yards. First and 10, Georgia Southern is around 46. From the 46 yard line, first and 10. Kennedy across the 50, steps out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Yeah, he's quick. He was dead in the backfield, just outran a lot of teal jerseys to get four yards, five yards. Just a sophomore, the Georgia 2A Offensive Player of the Year just two years ago as a senior in high school. Can you see him against high school kids? Wow. Won a state championship this senior year as well. You see a time of possession, Georgia Southern. We talked about the seven plays, eight play drives that they've had. Here's that more conventional triple option look. Works on the keeper, able to break a tackle inside the 40. Down to the 39-yard line. It's still not that traditional you know, triple option because he's not under center. But Talked about Tyron Jackson making a lot of plays. Try worse just sidesteps him right there and gets a bunch more after that. Tough kid. Only a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. Coach told us he makes mistakes, but he forgets them as quick as he makes them. That's a great asset for any quarterback. And this young man's three quarters of the way, four fifths of the way through his sophomore year, and two more after, obviously. Play clock was down to six, so Georgia Southern will call a timeout. So we'll take it with them. 13.02 to play as we're just on our way in the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern with a 24 point lead. Oh, well, there you see construction underway of an upper deck that will be put on over on the far sideline across from us here at Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina. Congratulations to the Coastal Carolina University Athletic Department, the city of Myrtle Beach, as they announced. Along in conjunction with uh, ESPN, the addition of another bowl game, the Myrtle Beach Bowl, which will start in 2020. We'll pitch play on the jet sweep around the outside and out of bounds. It's another big game for Georgia Southern. But again, starting in 2020, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. So again, congratulations to again, the city of Myrtle Beach, Coastal Carolina, and of course ESPN will be a big part of that. Good to see him put the ball on the outside hand, but other than that, he just 
turns on the Jets and Thompson gets a first down. Another youngster, a freshman. Fields right up the middle, pounds his way down to the 15 yard line. Fields already with 148 yards rushing and two touchdowns and picks up about five or six more. They have great complimentary running backs. There's Fields right there for the power. We saw the speed flip 21 around and make it a 12, and that's Wesley Fields, the speed guy. There they are right next to each other. Of course, they're going to take Kennedy and split him out. Doesn't mean he can't come on the jet sweep, as he's done a couple times. There he goes. Wirtz keeping it inside the 10 and down to the six yard line. Silas Kelly grabbed him and he dragged Silas Kelly for about three more yards down to the five. Shy Wirtz is 5'11, 200 pounds. Probably be 212, 215 next year. Powerful legs and he used them right there to drag the Chanticleer linebacker for a couple more yards. Knocking on the door again. This is Wesley Fields territory right here. They go to Garrett, the first man through, up the middle and touchdown. Mateo Garrett as Georgia Southern extends their lead 40 to 10 over the Shauna Clears here in the fourth quarter. Give the redshirt senior a little love too. He started to go towards Silas Kelly and just turned it the other way and got into the end zone. Garrett with his first touchdown of the night. He's gone over 70 yards rushing. And the kick good by Tyler Bass. What a half for Georgia Southern. A 31-point lead with 11.09 to play. Fifth meeting all time between the Chanticleers and the Eagles in the Battle of Birds. And there you can see it was dominated by Georgia Southern early on with big wins in 2006, 7, and 10. But then last year, here in Conway, Coastal Carolina with the 28 to 17 win. But now it's Georgia Southern dominating again. Here tonight, as we're in the fourth quarter, and Georgia Southern again had a 13 to 10 lead at Halftime, it's now 41 to 10, Eagles. Easy for me to say, schedule work in that Georgia Southern had to come here two years in a row. And again, Coastal will just let this go into the end zone. Boy, Tyler Bass is a heck of a weapon, isn't he? Yes, he is. On the kickoffs for Georgia Southern, also their field goal kicker. Had a 44-yarder earlier. So 20-yard field goal. Your kickoff cover team just has to get in shape by running because they don't have to tackle anybody. The one time they did, turned the football game around. Kilton Anderson stays in again. Fred Payton, the freshman starting quarterback for Coastal, was injured back in the third quarter. Yeah, we hope he's okay. Walked off under his own power. Kind of got his neck twisted forward. And rushed for a Anderson trying to find Malcolm Williams, and he cannot make the catch. Williams was having a tough time lining up. He was trying to communicate with the line judge over here on the near sideline. You know, for Malcolm Williams, time is running out here on his stretch. He has caught at least one pass in 14 straight games. And it's senior Malcolm Williams, so this is his last home game, and obviously one more in South Alabama. If they win that one, hopefully more in a bowl game. And the bowl game's important, obviously, for going to a bowl. But it's those extra practices you get, too, especially with this team that's so young for the Chanticleers. Georgia Southern already eligible for bowl competition. Flip it out on the pitch to Maribel. Gets across the 30. And up to about the 32, 33-yard line. For Coastal Carolina, 147 total yards of offense. They had 138 at the break. So unfortunately, for the Shawna Clears fans, just nine total yards of offense here in the second half. 
That time Rashad Bird and Deshaun Cooper, both linebackers. Kearney Vargas quickly on that little pitch and didn't give up much. Anderson spins, hands it off to Alex James, and he is met right at the line. Didn't get it. And that was Rashad Bird, the backup middle linebacker who came in. Bear hugged him and throws him down for a loss. You are short and they're going to kick it. Or fake it. They're going to line up to kick it. Comes Charles over to the punter. James, another one of the many underclassmen here on the squad out of Florence, South Carolina. Overson. Nice punt as Kennedy loses it out of bounds at the 21 yard line. That's about one of the only few errors at all today for Georgia Southern. Not much wind, but the ball kind of drifted towards the sideline, and I think he thought he was going to be out of bounds or knew where it was. And luckily for him, the ball just was fumbled out of bounds, no loss of possession. Well, I've never heard a coach in our conference calls during the week all year talk about special teams as much as we heard Lunsford, the head coach, you did. talk about special teams. And real quick, for Coastal Carolina, Charles Overson, I think, is going to be real good. Just a sophomore with the ball really explodes off his leg. But on the other side, again, for Georgia Southern, Tyler Bass has been a key for their special teams. And, you know, for Georgia Southern, they've got this five-point philosophy of what they need to do every game to be successful. And I love talking to Coach about that this week. Here's a run up the middle as Logan writes. Funny, able well, to pick up about seven or six told us or about it, and there's Coach Lunsford right there in the short sleeves. He said, it's a plan to win, and it's five points. And I said, Coach, can you get the SID to mail it to us? He said, I can tell them to you. I'll tell you right now. He like, said, I yeah. know what they are. <laughs> First one is own the ball. They have done that. The second one is dominate the run game. Boy, did they do that. And Anthony now in a quarterback. The third one is win special teams. Pretty good job there as well. Baron Anthony with the handoff that will get to the 31 yard line. So just about a yard shy of the first down. The fourth one is Eagles don't beat Eagles. In other words, unforced penalties, lining up wrong, um, illegal procedure penalties, those kind of things. The last one finished the fourth quarter. He said, I didn't originate them, I stole them from somebody else, but they work. <laughs> Again, there's LeBaron Anthony, the redshirt senior from Hinesville, Georgia. This is his first appearance of the season. Georgia Southern has not had many of these where they can get some extra guys some playing time here, but with the score the way it is, obviously at 41-10, to 10, LeBaron Anthony is in to replace Shy Wirtz. And they will keep it on the ground, and why not? Well, I tell you what, there are not many quarterbacks who are going to go four for six for 33 yards and yet win by 31 points here today. Well, Point two, dominate the run game. The first one, own the ball, don't give it up, don't cough it up. And remember, Coach Lunsford was the interim last year for five games, and they named him the head coach for one game, the last one. Six games, he was two and four in those six games. The boys, he turned it around this year to be bowl eligible and seventh win, working on number eight. I asked him, what was the main thing he wanted to do over the summer? And I'll tell you what he told us in a minute. On first down, hard tackle from behind as ball gets up to the 41-yard line. I loved what he said. First thing he said is we had to change the culture. And he said when I interviewed coaches that were going to be prospective staff members, he wanted them to have no ego and just be part of the group. And obviously he hired the people he wanted, and they have done that. And uh, they have turned it around because there's a rich tradition in F. CS football used to be one double A, and now they want to continue in FBS football, Georgia Southern. They were a dominant team in the one double A division way back when. Second down and five, and they'll pick up a, about three or four yards. It'll be third down and short as Matt LaRoche from Venice, Florida. Teammates with Bryce Carpenter, backup quarterback for Coastal Carolina, getting some carries here late in the game. And the Shanta Clear fans are disappointed. They're still not done with the bowl stuff with one to go. But it's only the second year of FBS participation. And last year, 
not a good year this year. They have won five, maybe six games. We'll see what happens for the last one, but they, they're turning the corner as well. Third down and short. And on second effort, looks like he's going to be right near the marker. And close to that first down, Grant Walker, redshirt Never freshman. See here again. See, he gets taken down partially by Gunther, Jeffrey Gunther, and then he just keeps going, doesn't put a knee down, and just gets over the 45-yard line. Well, we did not get it. I thought they go. Oh, that was a good spot for the Chanticleers. I thought he had it. Marked him just literally inches shy, so fourth down is. Bowerly will come out to punt it away again here for Georgia Southern. Eagles with a 41-10 lead. High spiraling kick inside the 15. Fair catch at the 14-yard line by Tyler. Fair catch made by Kion Tyler. Coastal Carolina begins to drive. Georgia Southern with a 31-point lead. Season long, and you finally have your pylon camera. There it is. Cool. Our game summary again, this was a 13-10 lead for Georgia Southern at the half, and look what the Eagles have done. 21 points in the third, seven more in the fourth, and that's a 31-point difference right now. As Coastal brings their offense back into the field, pick up the two yards. You know, when you run this kind of offense, we never asked Coach Lunch for this, but I would assume you just got to hang with it. it. Sometimes it doesn't look good because the other team adjusts, but if you keep, there's so much deceptive, movement and false movement that if you just hang with it and you got running backs like they have power running backs and speed guys eventually it'll pay off and it has this if this afternoon and into this evening under five minutes to play final home game of the season here for coastal carolina anderson in trouble and sacked back inside the 10 yard line wrapped up at the ankles by logan hunt he sidesteps one, and then Logan Hunt, number nine, gets him down. 6-2-2-7-0. That's a big man. Kilton Anderson trying to shed something. Yeah, it's one of those. Hand warmers? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I couldn't, think. couldn't quite get it to the sideline. There you see it. Just they inside leave the, it five. In the field of play. It's like a towel. They never throw it out of bounds. They just throw it near you. Question is who jumped first? Well, Alvin Ward jumped, and then the right tackle, Ethan Howard, heads up play. He Smart moved. Move. Yeah. Yep. He quickly moved before the defender for Georgia Southern could get back. So I think this is going to be on Ward. Looks like they'll get back the sack yardage. There is no foul for offside. South Carolina call a timeout. Did he say Coastal Carolina? Yes, he did. And they must have called it before the defender jumped, or else it would be an offensive penalty. And then the time, well, we'll see. But he did say Coastal Carolina call a timeout. Quick timeout here. Just a 30 second timeout. Under four minutes to play. Well, one of the stars of the game, no doubt about it. Chris Fields, the running back for Coastal Carolina. 20 carries, 148 yards, and two touchdowns. What a night for Wesley Fields. Anderson inside his own five and throws complete across the middle out near the 30-yard line as the catch is made by Javon Hiley. Talk about throwing into a tight window. First kill, Anderson has to get away from a lot of white jerseys. And then yeah, the referee, the, the umpire said it was tipped, but still completed. Justin Birdsong in tight coverage on number 18, but Hiley made the catch. Yeah, good catch by Hiley. After that was tipped, it turned into kind of a knuckleball. Yep. 
Malcolm Williams still looking for his first catch and trying to keep that streak alive. He's got 14 consecutive games of at least one catch. And the throw across the middle is too high. So close. Well, he had him sprinting across the middle. Catch there. Josh Anderson, oh, number five, just over his outstretched hand. You see him coming back into formation there. Brings up second down and ten. Coming up on three minutes to play here on senior night. Hand off up the middle across the 35 to the 36 yard line. You see they got to get to the 40 to get the first down. Jock has Hairston, sophomore out of Martinsville, Virginia for the carry. 11 right there, Shaudel Bell, the tight end. They've gone to him a couple times, but haven't been able to see him yet. If they get a first down, just keep the drive going here for Sean because they want to give it back. Even though there's not much time left, they just want to keep the drive going. Finish the game a little positive note. Baden Pinson, redshirt freshman, and a running back. He's out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Kill nearly intercepted. In and out of the hands of Justin Birdsong, a freshman quarterback for Georgia Southern. He's a little behind highly here in the freshman DB. Watch him jump this route right through his hands. Georgia Southern 14 interceptions this season as a team. Again, after they forced a fumble that they recovered back in the first half, now plus 22. An amazing number. A lot of pride on the defensive side of the football with those kind of numbers. What a punt by Overson again. As <laughs> Fields just going to let this one go. And it goes all the way down to near the 10 yard line. So Charles Overson, who had the one kind of miscue on his last punts, he really has had a heck of a day punting. And again, he's just a sophomore. He's going to be a heck of a special teams weapon for the Shauna Clears the next couple it's of years. It's definitely a weapon. You flip the field on people as yep. we see Georgia Southern do it. Productive punter as well. That young man's going to be. He is good. He's going to be better. He knows it too. He got to hold it out. Yeah, he liked it. That was a priceless expression. He's happy, but you can't be too happy because your team's down. It's like exactly. a guy who hits a home run when you're down ten nothing. Yep, exactly. Fumble on the snap. And Coastal Carolina is going to jump on it and recover it. And who else? Fitting, I was going to say, fitting that number 34, Teddy Gallagher, who I agree with you. You and I were talking about this before the broadcast today. Second half of the season MVP, no doubt. He's the one who gets it. Well, Silas Kelly gets hurt. And Gallagher comes in and has to play. And he has three or four really good games. And now Silas Kelly's healthy. They're playing them both at the same time. And Gallagher gets the fumble recovery. And Teddy Gallagher, only a sophomore. Silas Kelly, a sophomore. So the Shauna clears maybe with a chance to get something positive here before the end of the game, despite the fact they're down big 41-10. to 10. Again, they'll have one more opportunity to get that sixth win next week on the road at South Alabama. They fake the handoff. Anderson fires into the end zone incomplete. Going to go to Holly again and just couldn't connect with him. Same man in coverage the last time, 18, Justin Birdsong. Quick throw, time to throw it. I like Bell a little seam route here. When you get down near the end zone, number 11. Big target, 6'2", 225. Second down. Handoff goes down to the five yard line. Jock has Harrison with another carry. Again, he's another one of the youngsters, just a sophomore. 
Boy, he was a heck of a player back in high school. Won back-to-back -back state championships. Side stepped a couple people and got half of the yardage, third, and they can still get a first down inside the one. So third and a little more than four. I'd like to see a touchdown of Shawnee Clear for just to walk in, get a locker room with a little better feeling because they've been completely stymied in the second half here. Third down. They fake it to Harrison. Go to Likely. Inside the five, out of bounds at the four-yard line. It'll be fourth and three, but like I said, they can still make a first down. They're not kicking. I was just talking about South Alabama a second ago. I just checked on their score. They are trailing in the fourth quarter now big. 41 to 24 at Louisiana. So barring a big comeback, South Alabama will fall to two and nine. So again, that's who Coastal plays next week. But again, it is on the road. Concentrated week of practice. Try to get the sixth win. Anderson throwing it over the top and into the end zone for a touchdown. And it's likely who makes the catch again. Touchdown, Shauna clears. See this again, somebody came across to pop a white shirt right before Kilton Anderson threw the ball likely and made the touchdown happen. Watch this block right there. I believe it was Jacquez Harrison who ran the ball the last time, picked up the blitz. That's what running backs have to do to be successful. And because he did, they got six on the board. Likely with a big week last week, four receptions and a touchdown loss against Arkansas State and two more touchdown receptions today for Likely. The extra point is good by Viscardi to make it 41 to 17. 68 seconds left to go. And again, maybe, you know, maybe that will give Coastal some yep. something positive and maybe a little bit of momentum. Just uh, something to get them going into next week. The seniors do not want to end the football season next week. There's not a lot of them, but they are seniors. The coaches want the extra practice time with the underclassmen. So it's going to be a concentrated week to go to South Alabama on the road and try to get win number six, and that's not guaranteed to get a bowl game, but it makes you eligible. Win number eight. When they upset Appalachian at home, when Appalachian was ranked in the 25th, they envisioned the beginning of the championship game, which this is the first year of a championship game, game in the Sun Belt. That's still yet to be determined. The highest seed gets the game in their facility. Wesley Kennedy is still in this game, and he's back for Georgia Southern. He's going to let this one go all the way into the end zone now. So back out to the 25-yard line. I was actually surprised that we saw Kennedy back out there. I guess his, his instructions were to just fair catch it yeah. or let it go. I don't think they want to risk anything at this point. When they scripted it like that, you just hope it hits somebody in a white shirt to recover it. It didn't. And they smartly got out of the way and just let it roll all the way in the end zone. But with 68 seconds left here, while we've got a quick break in the action, Nate, I just want to thank everyone involved with our broadcast. Here this season, as you see Georgia Southern in the victory formation. We'll start with Matt Hogue, the athletic director here at Coastal Carolina. What a job they're doing here at Coastal with the facilities, with the programs, elevating here to the FBS level. Bowl game coming. Myrtle Beach Bowl starting in 2020. And then our thanks to our video staff, Alex Sousa, who's our basically our executive producer in charge of everything. And it's Hope Richardson, who's been our stage manager all season long. Donnelly Wolf, our director, and all of our guys and girls on cameras every week, our entire staff, great job of working hard and bringing these broadcasts to you here on ESPN Plus all season long. So thank you to all of you behind the scenes. Absolutely. People that nobody sees, they look at our mugs for a couple of minutes in the beginning, but they do all the heavy lifting. We just sit here or stand here and talk about it. Shy Wirtz with the final knee, and that will bring us to the end of this game as Georgia Southern, who had a field goal lead at the half, 13 to 10, put the hammer down here in the second half. Total second half, tremendous performance by the Eagles on the road to get win number eight. Chanticleer is close at the half, couldn't seal the deal, but they have one more chance to get that sixth win next week on the road at South Alabama. 
Total yards for Georgia Southern, 442. Nate, they finished with 409 yards on the ground. They Amazing. won the ground game. Great performance. So a big win for Georgia Southern. Congratulations to the Eagles as they improve to eight and three on the season. Once again, your final score, Georgia Southern wins it over Coastal Carolina, 41-17. Again, thanks to our entire crew. For Nate Ross, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Appreciate everyone tuning in this season. Thanks so much for watching as we say goodnight here from Conway.